Hey I'm Max and today I'll show you how to take a screenshot of your game and save it on your PC or on your mobile phone. This can be way more useful than the user taking a screenshot itself with his phone or, or using a PC software because you can hide some UI elements before taking the screenshot and also you can take a screenshot only of a part of the screen. For this example right here I'll take a screenshot only of the player that we customize. So let's not waste any time and get straight into it. You want to create a C Sharp script and call it whatever you want. I'll call it screenshot. In this script, since we want to use a file to save our file for the PNG, we want to use system.io. Then we can create a public void uh, take screenshot, or something, whatever you want to call it. But we cannot actually run the code to take a screenshot here because when we take a screenshot, we need to make sure that all the elements are rendered. And to do this, we need to wait for the end of the frame before taking it. If we take a screenshot in the middle of a frame, then it can cause some issues. Now, how do we wait for the end of the frame? It's easy, we use a coroutine. So make sure you're using system.collection. You want to do private IE numerator and then something like screenshot. And in your take screenshot, you want to start coroutine and then screenshot or whatever you called it. Now in the coroutine, you want to start by waiting for the end of the frame. So you want to do yield, return, new, wait for end of frame. And the code that we put under it is going to execute after the end of the frame. Okay, so first to take a screenshot, we need to take the texture on our screen. So we'll do texture 2D. Call it whatever you want. I'll call it texture equals to new texture 2D. Screen dot width. Screen dot height. So the size of our screen. Then we'll do texture format dot RGB 24. And then we pass false. So that's going to create a texture the size of our screen with the RGB24. Then we want to use that texture to read the pixel of our screen. So we will do texture.readPixels and then we'll add a rect for the size. So we'll do at 0, 0 for the screen.width and screen.height. And that's to take the full screen. But if you want to take only a part of the screen, you can put a different width and height here. And then in the saved image, we want to put it at 0, 0. Unless you want to have some empty space, which you probably don't, then you put 0, 0. And then you just have to texture.apply. Now, if you want to save it on a PC, I'll show you how to do it now. And after that, I'll do mobile. On mobile, it's a little bit different because we need to save the picture in the gallery and we cannot just save it anywhere like on a PC. Okay, so for PC, it's byte array. And then call it whatever you want. Byte equals to texture dot encode to png or gpg or whatever you want, I'll do png and then I'll destroy the texture and that's for both PC and mobile of course and for PC it's file.write all bytes and then the path where you want it, I'll just do application.datapad so it's in my project folder and I'll do plus slash screenshot dot png and then we put our bytes that we created above. Now if we save this and we put it on our project, you can create for example a new button on your canvas if you have one. Then you can go on any game object and add your screenshot component, your script. And on your button you can add an event, drag in the game object, go into your screenshot and click take screenshot. So now let's say I run this and I hit screenshot. It should take a screenshot of my screen as it is now. So as you can see, it just created the screenshot file here. And if I open it, you can see that it's exactly my screen. It actually created it into the assets folder, which is kind of annoying. I prefer it over here. So I'll just go in my code and add a little dot dot, which means go back. Also, I don't really like the UI elements being present on the screenshot. So I'll hide them. To do this, I'll just create an empty game object here and call it whatever like UI. And I'll just put all my buttons inside. In my screenshot script, I'll add a public game object uh, UI. And before taking the screenshot, I'll simply do UI.setActive false. And after taking the screenshot, I'll do UI.setActive true. Now I can save this, go back into my Unity. And on my screenshot script, I'll just put my UI in. You can see that now it's saved into my project folder because I did slash dot dot and now if I open it there's no more UI 
Now let's say you wanted to take only the part with the player in. You could do something like create a texture of half the width. Make it start at screen dot width divided by 4 and make it screen dot width divided by 2 wide so it's going to go from 1 4 to 3 4 and you can see now it goes from 1 4 to 3 4 of the screen just be careful if you decide to mess with the size do not use a pixel value like 500 to 700 or something like that because depending on the resolution of the phone or the monitor that it's been screenshotted on it's going to take different spots so make sure to always base your site on the screen width and screen height. Now another thing is that the file is always going to be called screenshot, so it's always going to override it. So let's say instead you, you want a custom name for each file. You can do something like string name equals, and then put whatever you want, let's say screenshot, epic app. And then if you want to make sure that it's different every time, you can do something like plus system dot date time dot now dot to string. And then you can put the format you want, let's say year, 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 month, month, with capitals for month, day, hour, minutes, seconds. And then don't forget the dot png. And now here, instead of doing the screenshot, I'll do plus name. And now it's, it should save with a different name every time. So I'll take a few screenshots just to show you with a few seconds interval. And now I should have a few screenshots with a different name and as you can see it worked. But if I try to run this on my phone, it's not going to work. Because the phone doesn't read the gallery at any path in the phone. So if I put it in the project files, it's not going to add it to the gallery. So I found this cool GitHub that's called Unity Native Gallery. And that plugin allows you to interact with gallery photos on Android and iOS. If you scroll down into the installation, you can see five ways to install it. I find the first one to be easier. So here you have the native gallery.unity package. And if you click on it, you can download it here. And once you download it, you just have to run it and it's going to add it to your Unity package. So here it is, native gallery. I, could, I just hit import. And now that it's imported into my plugins, I just have to go into the script. You might have to refresh your Visual Studio or whatever you use. And then here, since I'm no longer doing PC, I'll block that. And I'll go for mobile. And on here you can just do native gallery. That's save image to gallery. Then you put the texture. Then you put the album name. So for example, my app pictures or whatever you want to call it, which is going to be the album that it's going to be saved under. And then the file name, I'll just put actually I just put my name here that I did with the date. So now I'm going to build this on my phone and see if it works. If you don't know yet how to build to your phone, I might make a video soon about that, how to build it. I think for iOS you need Xcode or something like that, but I've never done iOS actually. But for Android, what you need to do is enable the developer mode by tapping on the build number. And then enabling USB debugging. And then when you plug your phone into your computer, you'll get three options and you just hit transfer files. And then you go in Unity, in file, build settings, and make sure you select Android. And if you didn't already select it, you can hit switch platform to switch to Android. And once your project has rebuilt for Android, you can hit build and run. Select the name, I just call it APK. And I just build and run. Once the app is ready, it's going to be launched automatically on your phone. And as you can see, since I didn't put the orientation, I can switch it side and I shouldn't because obviously that's not the right size that it should be. And also since I didn't do the canvas uh, scale with screen size, the buttons are kind of off the screen. So I could make a video about the build settings and how to make the UI scale soon. But for now, I'll just focus on doing the screenshot. So you can kind of see my screenshot button at the top. So if I hit it, it should take a screenshot. And there you go, it just did. And now let's just test, change a few settings like the eyes and the mouth and the shirt. And I'll take another screenshot. And now if I go on my phone, you can see that I have my two screenshot right here. Thankfully, I used the screen size for the screenshot, so the size of the screenshot are the same as on the computer. But if in my screenshot I did something like take from 300 to 700 pixel, it would not have been the same thing. So thanks for watching this video. If you have any question, leave a comment. Hopefully that was helpful to you. Check out my other videos for other Unity tutorials, and subscribe if you want.